After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Let me ask my friends, how deep does the rabbit hole really go? Well, that's what we're here to discover. Dedicated to the only serious choice, the gospel of Jesus Christ's music and the spoken word, watching Light Source Victory Television Live with me, your host, Pastor J.C. McCauley, inviting you to sit back and relax for the next 25 minutes as we continue our journey into the life-changing, life-giving, everlasting word of the Most High God. My friends, it's time for the most important half hour of the day, Bible study. Now, of course, it is my Bible study time that I spend with you. We try and do it each and every Sunday through Thursday right here on accesstv.org, Google+, and, of course, on Facebook. So, grab pencil, pen, paper, all the things necessary in order to take the journey with us, your Bible, and, of course, get on the phone and call up friends and family. Send out your tweets, your emails, and all of the other ways that you connect with people in your social media circles. Let them know it is indeed time for Light Source Victory Television Live. Broadcasting, of course, live from the greatest city on earth, Hartford, Connecticut, New England's rising star. Stick and stay, my friends. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How's everybody doing? I am, you know, I, I hope you're doing good. I'm doing, I'm doing exceedingly, abundantly, totally, thoroughly well. Wife and I went tonight to see Skyfall. You know, uh, hopefully you're not, uh, you oh, you could be, it really doesn't matter. Uh, I hope that you're not one of those people who who thinks that going to the movies is, is, in an, is, is a horrible, abominable thing. Uh, but, um, of course, we, we've been wanting to see uh, Skyfall since it premiered. But the first time we had an opportunity to do so was was today, tonight. So I took the kids to the grandparents, and uh, they uh, they uh, they watched, uh, uh, I guess, Barney and stuff. And my wife and I went out to the movies to watch Skyfall. Unfortunately, um, we uh, weren't here this 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 past Wednesday and Thursday. But fortunately, uh, we uh, went to visit my father. So. That's where I was uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Like I say, we try to be here Monday through Thursday. Excuse me, Sunday through Thursday, uh, for our Bible study time. And uh, you get a day off when I get a day off. So I had two days off, and now we're back at it. So we're raring and ready to go on your television screen. The life-changing, life-giving, everlasting Word of the Most High God. Want you to open up your Bibles if you don't have. A Bible. Well, as you can plainly see, there is one on your viewing screen. All right. That is the life changing, life giving, everlasting word of the Most High God. Let us set it up for our Bible study time. On this side of your viewing screen is the New Living Translation. And on this side of your viewing screen, we're going to set up the authorized version, otherwise known as the King James Version. The authorized, excuse me, the New Living Translation, which is on this side of your screen, uh, uses modern English, and it makes it a whole lot easier uh, to uh, to uh, to, um, to just for you to understand. We don't spend a lot of time looking up words in the in the you know Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible to get the Greek, and then go back and find translation, and you know, same thing with the Hebrew and all of that other stuff. It just it just saves us a lot of time. So after some 30-odd years of doing this, uh, I find this is the best version to use. We put them up side by side so that you can um, uh, be able to, to, to share with us out of the, uh, the King James as well as the New Living Translation. My mentor taught me that if it isn't in the King James, 
Stanley, oh, then it isn't in the word of God. And so that, that that's, uh, was, was my mentor's, one of my mentors, motto and mantra. It's got to be in the King James. Well, nonetheless, here we are. And so let's get started with 27 minutes left in the program. All right. We may know that these things make no difference, but we cannot just go ahead and do them. To please ourselves we must be considerate of the doubts and fears of those who think these things are wrong now you might ask uh, excuse me program host pastor Stan uh, what are we what are you talking about here well uh, we don't do review here on uh, on light source victory television we uh, expect that you will take and uh, apply uh, due diligence in staying up to speed with us. If you miss any portion of the program, you can always log on to uh, accesstv.org and click on Light Source Ministries. Okay? And that thread will give you all of the episodes or programs uh, from Light Source Directory Television back to the beginning of our return to uh, broadcasting so it starts off in Romans chapter 1 and so we're just gonna keep plowing along we do about 220 240 uh, programs every year all right and they'll all be out there on 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 the World Wide Web for your consumption okay we will keep 100 in the queue so if you miss any episode you can always go back and get caught up but we do not do review. It is my expectation that you will be here when we are here. Okay? So with that, let's just pick up where we were when we were last together. Romans chapter 15, verse 1. Reading out of the New Living Translation. We may know that these things, do, these things make no difference. But we cannot go, just go ahead and do them to please ourselves. We must be considerate of the doubts and fears of those who think these things are wrong. Verse 2, top of your screen. We should please others. If we do what helps them, we will build them up in the Lord. Now, this is talking, or making reference to, and I have to be somewhat responsible here. This, of course, is making reference to committing uh, acts that others find distasteful or sinful even though they aren't and it's um you know it's no big thing for you or i to not commit such things so if you believe that having uh you know a turkey dinner is a sin and i have a succulent turkey dinner to eat then it would be incumbent upon me to be sensitive to your lack of knowledge and understanding and not eat the turkey dinner. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not going to kill me not to eat the turkey dinner. But it may help you in your faith and your understanding. So as not to put a stumbling block in your progress and growth for losing faith with God because of some silly selfish act I commit. That's basically what it's talking about. So even though it isn't sin, I ought not do it. Because my main concern ought to be your spiritual growth. Now, does this apply to people in general? You know, that we become, you know, men pleasers, just doing what makes other people happy? Absolutely not. This is talking about the, your brothers and sisters in the Lord and as it relates to their spiritual growth. Okay? Verse 3, for even Christ didn't please himself, as the scriptures say, those who insult you are also insulting me. Such things were written in the scriptures long ago to teach us. They give us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for God's promise. Chapter 15, verse 5, reading out of Romans at the top of your screen. May God, who gives this patience and encouragement, help you live in complete harmony with each other, each with the attitude of Christ Jesus toward the other. Now, 
the attitude of Christ Jesus toward the other. Now, how is the attitude of Christ best expressed? Let's see if we can use the Wayback Machine here and figure this out. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God's love for humanity, God's love for us, God's love for those who have yet to come into a relationship with him. For when we hated God, he shed life's precious blood for the remission of our sins. So it is clear that God's love for humanity moved him to provide the vehicle necessary for our salvation. The shed blood of Christ, thus opening up the vehicle uh, for God to be merciful. In order to be merciful, you have to have something to be merciful with. He's merciful with the completed atoning work of Christ and the mercy part of God meets you at your need, the place where you are, are uh, not sufficient or insufficient, where you don't measure up, where you miss the mark. God, through Christ, allows you to make the mark through your relationship with Jesus by accepting him as your personal Lord and Savior. Okay, so your faith, in him is counted to you as righteousness not your actions not your ability to keep the law but your faith in christ jesus so the attitude that christ has for us ought to be the attitude that we have for each other if christ was willing to give his life in obedience that he might become the sacrifice for us how much more should we be willing to sacrifice the succulent turkey dinner or something else that isn't wrong per se for you but a brother or sister may think that it is wrong okay your keeping the law won't won't make you righteous the law just uh, proves that you're a lawbreaker and thus the law condemns you okay on your screen verse six well we'll read verse five again and continue into verse 6 verse 5 on your screen reading from Romans chapter 15 out of the New Living Translation may God who gives this patience and encouragement help you live in complete harmony with each other each with the attitude of Christ toward each other now of course the Bible says if you say you love God and hate your brother the love of God is not in you it is inconsistent, it is inconceivable that if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ that is honest and true, that you have hate and disdain for another brother in the Lord. You just can't. You can't. Why? Because the attitude of Christ is that God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. He provides the means for the salvation of the world. And those that come into that relationship that are one with Christ, that are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, he loves. Now, if he loves those who have called upon his name and come into that familial relationship, how is it that you, a member of the family, a member of the body of Christ, one who has the indwelling Holy Spirit, whose steps are ordered by the Lord, sanctified, set aside, complete in Christ Jesus, able to say unto the mountain, be thou removed, all right, far above all principalities and powers, walking in the full authority of Christ, and then you don't like people who are professing Christ Jesus because of some silly personal issues inconsistent with Scripture, okay? So the attitude that Christ has uh, toward us, we should have toward each other. Verse 6 at the top of your screen. Then... All of you can join together with one voice, giving praise and glory to God, the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ. So, accept each other just as Christ has accepted you. Then God will be glorified. So, God is glorified when the body is in a state of unity. All right? And let me, let me, let me uh, just uh, uh, expound on that last statement a little bit. It isn't that you go out and try to unify in an effort to bring this glorification to God. 
It is that you are walking in obedience to the scripture. You have fully submitted yourself to uh, the Lord. And as a result, there is fruit that comes forward. And the fruit bears witness of Christ in you. And that harmony of the, of, of the spirit that you see in other Christians, it's just going to be there. All right. That's the kind of unity we're talking about. We're not talking about a, a, a man-made constructed unity. The body of Christ is not a political party trying to bring together different coalitions with different interests so that they can all achieve uh, some sort of grand goal that allows each of them to have a slice of the pie of power and resources that satisfy their own individual interests. So if I'm with group A and my concern is group B, all right, my wants, needs, and desires is, is, is from group B. Let me, re let me restart that over. If I'm with group A and my needs, wants, and desires are out of class one, and I'm in group B and my needs, wants, and desires are out of class two, and if I'm with group C and my needs, wants, and desires are out of class three, and normally the, th the three of us can't get along, but together, we can attain the numbers necessary to move forward a political agenda and receive resources from all of, the, all of the number classes and get what we want. God doesn't work like that. All right? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, there's going to be unity among the body. So it isn't like you go out and you have these, you know, um, you know, uh, a workshops on church unity. I mean, how do you have a workshop on church unity? Uh, a workshop on working together to move God's agenda forward. We're going to call ourselves the majority of the moral. We are the religious left and the religious right, and we're going to come together to move an agenda that is God, pro-God, as though God needs your political, um, and, and, uh, uh, your political, um, what do we call these? Uh, your political um, escapades to move an agenda that is God-centered forward. God's will is done, period. The only thing you need to do is get your mind around what's happening. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God doesn't need consensus to have his will come to pass. You need to get with God's plan, and his plan is laid out very clearly in the word here, all right? There's, there's no contradiction here, just your ignorance and my ignorance. There's no contradictions. What we need to do is align ourselves with what the word says to the degree that we start to demonstrate in our activities, in our actions, in our manners, in our conversation, in our goings and comings, the things that mark the fruit of the indwelling spirit so accept each other just as christ has accepted you then god will be glorified verse 8 number of new beginnings romans 15 reading out of the new living translation remember that christ came as a servant to the jews to show that god is true to his promises he made to their ancestors and he came so that the gentiles might also give glory to God for his mercies to them. That is what the psalmist meant when he wrote, I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing praises to your name. I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing praises to your name. Verse 10. And in another place, it is written, Rejoice, O you Gentiles, along with his people, the Jews. And yet again, verse 11, Praise the Lord, you Gentiles. Praise him, all you people of the earth. And the prophet Isaiah said, To heir, excuse me, the heir to David's throne will come. And he will rule over the Gentiles. They will place their hopes on him. All right, hopes. They will place their hopes 
on him. Verse 12 out of the new, I mean, out of the King James Version. Okay. And again, Isaiah saith, there shall be a root of Jesse and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles. In him shall the Gentiles, what? Trust. Trust. Or put their reliance on or in for their eternal existence. Okay. Put their hopes in. Hope is a certain expectation that the good thing promised will come to pass. We understand the faith is the substance of the thing hoped for. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. All right, or as one of my mentors used to say, the transubstantiation, to borrow a Catholic term, the transubstantiation of things hoped for, it is the act in which something is transmuted or trans, trans, or, or changed, the, the, the changing of water to wine, transubstantiation, the, it, the faith is the changing element it is that which is the result of the change faith is the substance of things hoped for it is the tangible physical essence the the thing that you can lay hold on uh, of the hope all right now fear on the other hand is a certain expectation of of doom dread failure Missing the mark. We live in a society that is centered around fear. People are scared of everything. Hey, are you you're afraid for your safety? My God, a storm is coming, and without the help of the federal government, what will I do? I live here on the beach, and the hurricane is coming. I'll I'll die out here. You sure will if you don't have enough sense to go inland. I mean, some things you have control over, but you've been you've been you've been programmed by the things you watch on TV, by the stories you read in the in the propaganda news, uh, the the, the uh, uh, papers and 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 uh, you know the industrial news complex, the industrial the industrial media complex. You know, uh, Joseph Goebbels is alive and well. We see it manifest in everything you watch is part of the propaganda that programs you to be in a state of expecting the worst, in a state of expecting God to fail, in a state of fear instead of hope, the hope that is aligned and in line with the word of God where our promise and our hope is built on the eternal everlasting word of Christ and his resurrection and defeat over the grave. So my hope is not in my 401k. My hope is not in the fiscal cliff not happening. My hope is in Christ Jesus. For it is his blood that has set me free. It is his blood that is the currency that matters most. If you don't have a hold of the currency of life, which is the blood of the lamb, then you truly are headed for a fiscal cliff. All right, and you will be found wanting on judgment day and you, my friend, will not make it. All right, so our hope is in he who is the Messiah. The heir to David's throne will come and he will rule over the Gentiles. They will place their what? Hopes on him. Verse 13 at the top of your screen reading out of the New Living Translation, chapter 15, Romans. So I pray that God who gives you hope will keep you happy and full of peace as you believe in him. May you overflow with hope through the power of the Holy Spirit, overflowing with hope. Out of the King James, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, in faithing. Okay, that ye may abound in hope 
the outward, right? Faith subs the things hoped for. You have your hope, so therefore you have the faith. Go on and on and on and on. We run out of time going over that over and over again. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the down payment upon the purchased possession. You are the purchased possession, purchased by the blood of the Lamb, paid in full, complete in Christ Jesus. The only thing that needs to grow now is your understanding of God's word so that through the word your faith can grow faith comes by what hearing hearing by the word of god you can't expect your faith to grow if you don't get into the word of god if you don't read the word of god if you don't understand the word of god from a spiritual perspective not the ability to parse and divide the word like the theologian does and then come to the stupid uh conclusion that there is no god see the theologian is the one that makes this uh a pronounced uh, a, a grain of wisdom all right well the fool the Bible says is said in, in his heart that there is no God all right so anyone that makes that is an idiot all right God's word is forever settled and he meant what he said and you don't have to like what the word says but you better know for sure that it means what it says all right I am fully convinced dear brothers and sisters that you are full of goodness, not halfway, not getting there. You're full of goodness. You know these things so well that you are able to teach others all about them. Verse 15. Even so, I have, bold, I have been bold enough to emphasize some of these key points or some of these points, knowing that all you need is this reminder from me for I am by God's grace a special messenger from Christ Jesus to you Gentiles I bring you good news and offer you up a fragrant sac as a fragrant sacrifice to God so that you might be pure and pleasing to him by the Holy Spirit so it is right for me to be enthusiastic about all Christ Jesus has done through me in my service to God I declare not excuse me I dare not boast of anything else I have brought the Gentiles to God by my message and by the way I live before them I have won them over by the miracles done through me as a sign from God all by the power of God's spirit in this way, I have fully presented the good news of Christ all the way from Jerusalem to, uh, to uh, huh. all right, I don't know the pronunciation of said word. Let us look it up. Double click. I can't see this. Uh, let's do the Strong's numbers. Mm -mm. Strong's numbers on. And uh, there we go. I don't know if you can see that on your viewing screen, but I can. The Lyric Band. Pronounced Elo Rican. Illyrican, Illyrican, Illyrican. All right. See, I can't pronounce the word, so. You know, I'm not going to pretend that I can when I can't, because you can clearly see that I can't. So let's look it up. And that's how you stop being ignorant. You come across something you don't know, you look it up. You come across a word you can't pronounce, look it up. Ask for help. Look it up. The tools that you need are always available. Always. Okay. Uh, so I guess that's pronounced uh, Illyrican. Illyrican. Greek word. All right. Looking at the root of the word origin. From the adjective from an adjective from a name of uncertain derivation the lyric bread 
Hmm. Okay. Well, uh, from uh, all over the place. <laughs> okay. So he had preached from Jerusalem clear over to this place here. And if I am to understand what I just looked up, someplace in Italy. Or what we consider Italy. My ambition has always been to preach the good news where the name of Christ has never been heard, rather than where a church has already been started by someone else. I have been following the plan spoken of in the scriptures, where it says those who have never been told about him will see, and those who have never heard of him will understand. All right, so the more, the more urgent, uh, there should be a, a sense of urgency, the more weightier thing should be for you out there who know Christ Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior to undergo effort every day to tell someone that doesn't know about Jesus about Jesus. I, I don't mean to ram him down their throat, but I mean to present to them the opportunity to reject the gospel. That's how I like to put it. Okay, present to them the opportunity to reject the gospel, not accept it, reject it. See, that changes things dramatically, all right, where they have to say no. Because until you present it in such a way that they have to make a decision, then they haven't come to a place where they need to choose, all right. To have something in the room is not to make people in the room aware of it. Just because there's a red box in the room doesn't mean everybody sees the red box. It's not until you say, have you seen the red box and would you like it? Till there is an issue. Now they have to make a decision and ultimately that's what you want to do when it comes to Christ. You want to present them with the opportunity to make a decision. All right. Hopefully they will say yes. But if they reject the gospel, they have had now the opportunity and the chance. Okay, well, my friends, that is verse 22, and unfortunately, um, yeah, 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 we're out of time. Verse 22, we have 10 more, we have 11 more verses to go, and, uh, we can't we can't power through them so uh, we will leave off here at verse 21 pick it up at verse 22 tomorrow and um, we'll continue on then all right our time together has come to an end unfortunately this happens every time we do program all right every time all right so um, let us take our leave my friends Remember, when it's all said and done, the only thing you need to know is this fact, and that is, of course, that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. He alone saves and changes lives. Call on his name today. Allow him to be Lord of your life. Okay? Uh, tell somebody about him. Amen? If you know him as your personal Lord and Savior. We're out of here. Now I can go eat. That's... The sacrifice I make. I, I, I don't eat before I come in here. And it's a long day, too, I might, might add. We can do the program live at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, so I don't eat dinner until I get finished with Light Source Victory Television. And I am very hungry. My friends, God bless you all. Keep you strong in the faith. Remember when it's all said and done, the only thing you need to know is this fact. And that is, of course, that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. He alone saves and changes lives. God bless you. See you real soon. Bye-bye.